Here at Till We Make It, I have tackled the topic of being too young to train inside the ring. But what about when we reverse gears? Could you be too old to train? I'm Mike Wagenbush, and this is Till We Make It. And after we posted our video about what to do when you are yet too young to be training inside a wrestling ring, one of our great viewers asked, well, what about the other end of the spectrum? Is it possible that you can be too old to train? And while I suppose my knee-jerk answer to that could be, well, yes, you could be too old to train, I want to take a more nuanced look at that very challenging question. I don't mind telling you, from my experience as a trainer, that I have absolutely had people start training in their 30s. I have not yet had someone start training in their 40s or 50s or even 60s, but if I hang around long enough, I'm sure that's coming for me too. But, full disclosure, the overwhelming majority of trainees that I see at my Wrestle Factory or out and about as I'm training people all over the globe tend to be roughly college age. They are performing by the time they are into their mid or late 20s. So, is starting in your 30s a bit of a late start? Sure. Just on average of numbers, the vast majority of people that start in professional wrestling do tend to start younger. Is that necessarily an obstacle? I don't think so. So if you have heard what I've said about the median age of trainees I happen to encounter, and you are not dissuaded from pursuing your pro wrestling dream, there are some questions you need to ask yourself, and one that you need to ask your physician. And let's start with that one. You need to ask your doctor if you are capable of regular, rigorous, athletic activity. And if it turns out that your doctor doesn't object, well, think about these things. One, are you in relatively good health? Have you taken care of your body? Because if you are choosing to start a little bit later in life and you've been treating your body like a dumpster, well, you might have more of an uphill battle than someone that shows up in great athletic condition. And you need to ask yourself whether or not your schedule can accommodate professional wrestling, which is exceptionally demanding on your time. It's going to interfere most likely with whatever you do as a regular job to make a living, and it's going to interfere with all your social interactions and your familial obligations as well. So you need to take an honest look at your schedule and make a decision about whether or not wrestling fits. One last question you need to ask yourself is about the financial responsibility to wrestling. During your apprentice phase, you're going to be out a whole bunch of money because you're going to invest in your education. You're going to invest in your gear. You're going to invest in travel during your apprentice phase, and that's all money going out long before you will have built up enough equity in your wrestling brand for money to come back in. So if you have heard all of these things and you've decided, I'm going through that anyway, Mike, I want to train as a professional wrestler. Well, I've also got some good news because there are four departments in which I happen to think you're going to have an advantage over those college age kids that make up the majority of the students I happen to see. The first of these advantages you are going to enjoy is you will most likely come in with realistic career expectations. Oftentimes, my youngest trainees come in exceptionally idealistic and many of them plagued by an existence in which they have been told far too many times, that's good enough. And that can be really, really poisonous to people that imagine they're going to succeed at the very highest of levels in an extremely competitive industry. It doesn't matter if it's professional wrestling or not. Being told that average or mediocre performances are good enough can actually handicap people's ability to realize their full potential because they aren't being pushed hard enough. And a second way in which you will enjoy an advantage over all those spring chickens at training is that you will probably have a much more stable life than they do. You probably already have a career of some sort, a method of making a living, making sure that your rent or your mortgage is paid, that kids fresh out of high school and college do not have sorted out. There's a certain stability to your lifestyle that will support you in a way that younger trainees have yet to discover. A third thing is a trait I often see demonstrated by my older trainees that my younger trainees tend to lack. And it's one of the most desirable things in all of professional wrestling. And that is coachability. What I've observed throughout my entire experience is that my older trainees can take notes 
or feedback from their coaches, incorporate it, and then turn around and demonstrate a new result fairly readily. Whereas my younger trainees often imagine that somehow these notes or feedback are a personal criticism as opposed to a professional note. And the fourth and final one of these advantages is certainly one that I have come to value. I have noticed that my trainees who start when they're just a couple years older than the median age demonstrate a much higher level of maturity. Although it can certainly be said that those that start training at a younger age enjoy a certain physical resiliency, their bodies will recuperate faster, allowing them to return to the ring than those who start just a little bit later on in life. The reality of the matter is, it is those younger trainees who are often ill-prepared to deal with all the sacrifices and the challenges that are coming down your pike the moment you start heading toward your pro wrestling dream. And my mature trainees are able to handle these things with a level-headedness and a rationale I only wish my younger trainees could espouse. So is it possible that you are too old to begin training as a professional wrestler? Well, yes, it's possible. But if you really want to know the answer, you've got some questions to ask yourself. There's that one to ask your physician. And then some other factors you may want to consider before finally making the plunge. And it might not be a bad idea to visit a training center near you when they have an open house, a free workshop, or some other occasion when you are allowed to participate even in a limited capacity to get a sense if the culture around pro wrestling near you is something you want to be involved in. And if all the advantages I outlined for you, like stability, maturity, coachability, and realistic expectations, don't give you enough of a leg up, well, I know one other way you could get a leg up. That's by reading my book, Seven Keys to Becoming a Better Performer, a book for fellow professional wrestlers, is a deep dive into performative elements in professional wrestling and structural elements in professional wrestling. The physical mechanics will be the ones you do in the ring, but structure and performance are things you can learn from my book over on Amazon.com or awaiting you in audio form on Audible.